<laughs> is what it is. I don't know. About to find out. We're about to find out. Because we're going to kick it. Ooh. Got it. Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard Headed. This is your host, <laughs> Chet Sears. And with me goofing around is Troy, Three Shot Trussell, and Matt Amos. We're so glad you're with us. Um, what yes. A, what a fun time of year. Uh, we're going to talk about the wonderful holiday of Thanksgiving today a little bit. Because because it's Thanksgiving. And we're going to talk about the top three Thanksgiving foods. Oh, I'm getting and, hungry just thinking about it. And then Troy's going to have a good word. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But Matt, you're going to give us the framework to think about what's on our mind right now with uh, this wonderful holiday. <laughs> Well, you know, it is Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Turkey Day. And uh, I'm just really thankful for some things that have happened of late. Uh, one of them being um, getting back from Montana and having some warriors up that absolutely slayed some elk and processed it, turned it into some really good eats, um, as Chet knows. Um, and he, he knows about the summer sausage. He even texted me and said, knocked it out of the park. Yeah. I is, that the word, is that the terminology? Where's my use? log of summer sausage? Uh, yeah. You give me a freezer and I will give you some yeah. meat. Hey, you Chet, remember? Chet needs to give me a freezer. You remember that <laughs> freezer? You remember that little freezer I was thinking about giving to you? Yeah, you gave it to yeah. somebody else? Traded it. Ah, oh. yeah, I traded it yes. for some meat. Yes. <laughs> so you got it? Yes. Yeah. I literally he, he traded. We traded. I literally pulled into town, like I I driven from Montana to, uh, what is that, Lyman, Colorado? Yeah. And I'd been debating spending the night, but I was like, ah, I might just go ahead and push. Ended up. Nature was calling. I was like, I'm going to get a room, get some food. <laughs> Ate, slept. Did you, did you sleep in a Best Western and get Domino's? No. I slept in a Holiday Inn, but I, it was already. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is Holiday Inn Holiday Inn Express. Inn Express. Um, but I, I got there too late for Domino's. Yeah. And I don't think Lyman even has a Domino's. I don't. Lyman doesn't have much. They have more than I thought. Yeah. With those hotels right there. It was a pretty nice little setup. Um. But then the next morning, I, I finished the last, I think it's seven hours from, from there maybe because it's an hour to Lyman from Denver, something like that. Yeah. And uh, I, I pull right into town, um, get to my house, pull out the meat, open it up. And I'm like, oh, it's already starting to thaw a little bit. Open up my freezers, completely full, like zero room whatsoever. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't have room for this. And... The thing oh. was, the guy whose who's summer sausage it was that we made it for, it was his elk. He left camp and left all of his summer sausage in the freezer. And Chase was like, I don't have room for this. I can't I can't keep it here. I'm getting ready to butcher a steer. Uh, Chase is the landowner. He was like, so it needs to get out of here. And I was like, well, I have that cooler that I brought all the meat down in, so I'll just throw that in there, and I'll try to find a space for it when I get home. Well, there was no room. And so I was like, uh, I'm looking online. For a freezer. There's no, there's and so shortage. They they had some, but not exactly what I wanted. And what I wanted won't be until March. And I was like, oh, okay. Gosh. I was like, so the meat's not going to last till March sitting here in the garage in a igloo. So I was like, hey, Chet, do you have any extra room in your freezer? And he's like, yeah. And then he's like, well, or I have a <laughs> freezer you can have. And I was like, how about we trade? Yeah. <laughs> So we made a little meat trade. We made a meat trade, which is really cool because, you know, trading, that's just cool. No cash exchanged. And then later that day, I'm at a deal. One of the things that we're wanting to do at our deer camp is uh, get an outdoor stove. So instead of having like a fire pit, um, especially during deer season because you get all smoke smelly and all that kind of stuff, we just want to have some heat where we could sit outside and eat and whatever else, but then pipe the smoke away. And, uh, so we, you know, had this idea, let's just get this stove. And then there's like this old tank or something around there. And, and Jeremy's like, well, I got a buddy of mine that can 
you know, cut that thing up and uh, make us a, a uh, like a stove out of that, you know, and that way we don't have to go buy one. Cause I was looking on like marketplace or whatever. And that night bump into his friend, you know, <laughs> and uh, I'm like, Oh be. man, has Jeremy talked to you yet about this? Uh, the night that uh, traded, you know, Matt for the, the freezer. And uh, so did Jeremy talk to you yet about, you know, making this, cutting this thing up with your plasma, whatever, and uh, doing some welding for us. And he's like, for what? And I'm like, well, we want to make this stove for our deer camp. He's like, I have an old wood burning stove, but it's got like a little crack in the back of it. And then it would only be useful if you used it outside, you know, cause you don't have to worry about carbon monoxide. I'm like, that's exactly what we need. He's like, well, heck I, I don't need it. You could just, you know, come pick it up. And I'm like, I don't feel good about just taking some, how about I trade you some meat for it? You know, <laughs> he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I got some, I got some ground bison. I'll, I'll trade you for that. And he's like, Oh, that'd be awesome. You know? So I made two meat trades in one day, a nice. record, a record it's, for me. It's like the new currency. Yeah. <laughs> elk meat. Elk. Well, I didn't, even, I don't I even got, think I traded you elk other than the summer, the summer sausage. sausage. You got alligator gator. You got, Bighorn sheep roast. Yes, a bighorn sheep roast. Wow. Elk, uh, elk summer sausage. Elk summer sausage. There's one other thing in there that um Oh, uh uh pork. Oh yeah, yeah, uh breakfast sausage. Uh, from, and there should have been hog. a pork loin from yeah. a wild hog oh. in the white package. Okay. But I'm game. Uh, wild game. Hang on, I'm texting my sister right now when she cooks that sheep roast to invite me over. <laughs> she, I cook wild game in our house. Mm-hmm. Unless it's ground. Well, so Ashley doesn't cook roast either. You know, Hannah doesn't like roast either. I didn't say Ashley doesn't like it. She just doesn't cook it. Oh, Hannah doesn't even like it. Yeah. So, so I eat it all. You know, being that, you know, Thanksgiving is upon us. And did I did you say up on us or up upon, us? upon us? <laughs> upon us, he's like, you know, come at me, Thanksgiving. He's all up on me. I'm getting ready to shoot it. <laughs> and I, I didn't have um, much success in the way of turkey this year because normally I would have a, a wild bird that we would be able to cook. That did not happen. Hmm. And while we were in. Uh, Montana. This was like my first time ever actually just like cooking for everybody for the whole thing. Cause I was just like, well, I'm going to come up. I'm not going to hunt. I just want to help out. Well, what can you do? And I was like, I can cook. I'm like, are you sure? And everybody kind of doubts, you know, they look at me and they're like, mm, maybe not, you yeah. know? <laughs> and so um, blew them away with my cooking skills, but I also learned some in the process and one of the um, one of the dishes that was made was called carpaccio, and what you do with carpaccio is you you take an elk tenderloin or venison tenderloin, but it's a red meat, whatever it is, tenderloin. Slice it, you know, freeze it a little bit. Slice it extremely thin. The freezing allows you to slice it. Yeah, allows you to slice it real thin. So you don't want it completely frozen, but you like, just define real thin, like pencil thin or like, like almost like bruschetta thin, you know, bruschetta is that's mm-hmm. bread. What am I thinking of? <laughs> yeah. Bruschetta is like the uh, crispy bread with a tomato. What's the, what's and the mozzarella in the, yeah, but what's the meat? Oh, prosciutto. Prosciutto. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, so that thin is yeah. how you want it. And then what you do is you you put a layer of lime juice on the uh, on the bottom, set the um, or I'm I'm sorry. Once you have it sliced real thin, mm-hmm. set it in buttermilk overnight. Mm. Next day, pull it out, buttermilk and uh, baking soda, and baking soda breaks it down, makes it real tender. Um, same thing that you would do with the gator. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would soak it the night before with. Um, just in water and baking soda breaks down that muscle tissue and then soak it for at least eight hours in Italian dressing before you fry it. Mm -hmm. And you'll have something that's almost as flaky as catfish. And uh, so on this carpaccio, once you've soaked it in buttermilk and the baking soda overnight, pull it out, put uh, squeeze half of a, I think it's half a lime 
mm-hmm. on the bottom of the plate, lay out a single layer of the sliced tenderloin. And then over the top of that, you put balsamic vinegar, more or sorry, more lime juice, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, and then top it with uh, green onions, shaved Parmesan cheese, and capers, which mm. I never in my life uh, I didn't know what a I didn't know what a caper was. I mean, I'd had it on steak, mm-hmm. but I, I just thought you know I didn't know really know what it was, and. Uh, it's funny because the guy who's teaching the recipe, he was the same way. Um, it's Kevin. Yeah. Um, was the guy who's teaching me this. And uh, he goes, man, he goes, they laughed at me too. He goes, don't worry about it. He goes, the first time I saw it, I go, who, how, how do you do these pickled peas? That's what he's yeah. calling them, pickled <laughs> peas. So uh, but we get the capers, put it on top. And I'm not a, I'm not a sushi guy. I do not like sushi. Um, I've tried it all, just not my thing. Um and so I didn't know how well this was going to go over with me. Um, but I tried it with some convincing and good stuff. Really good. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was literally surprised and we didn't even have the good crackers, you know, that come in the box, you know, we had the ones that come in like the plastic wrapper, you know, and we're eating it on the, on the cracker. It was, it was really good. And yeah. so that's, that's one that I'm going to, I'm going to try. I know that nobody at, at, it uh, is going to want to try it, you know, for Thanksgiving. Um, I'll try it. But my wife and kids will eat it, but I don't think any of my <laughs> in-laws or uh, my my folks are going to want it. But super good recipe, um, super easy uh, as well to try to do. And so this year I think I'm switching it up for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to go with the, the uh, traditional turkey because I – Looking back, I think every time that I've had turkey, um, the last three times, I've gotten violently ill. Mm. So I think I'm done with turkey. And I think this year I'm going to do brisket and pulled pork. Yeah. Yeah. Good choices. Because I'll be using your pork butt recipe. recipe. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the only question I have for you on that, though, is is when – so you've got the California tri-tip seasoning mm-hmm. and then you have the yard bird yep. seasoning so do you add the yard bird first first coat it and then put the uh, let that tack yep and then then go back with the california tri-tip okay and and, and that's a not a coating that's a it was light mm-hmm. okay because the the problem i had with Me- that medium depends on the size of your pork well butt. the problem i had with it was when i when i wrapped it now it came out great i mean it was really really good but that yard bird wanted to stick to the aluminum foil when I peeled it back. Never had that happen. No, no. It's almost like there was a glaze that it almost just like, and it could have been fat that just yeah, melted to the whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But, it depends on how much I, I trim. Well, and I, I did too on that one fat off. Yeah. I, I, I trimmed it to where there was nothing left, but yeah, could have been just, me. I got, I have a really good brisket recipe too. If you need any help there, I might, I might, and more of that is just probably the right size. Yeah. Cause I, I don't think the bigger ones do as well as a kind of a medium. Well, size one. I think, I think I've gotten to where, cause uh, like my last two have been home runs. Um, but it's, it's the opposite of pork. Like pork is a time temperature, you know, do this, mm-hmm. this, this, and this. And brisket's a br- feel brisket is a, yeah. Does it look, how does it look? And then that, you know, then once you get the bark, how you want it to look, and then you, you know, I, I wrap it and then it's a f- pull it when you feel, when it feels a certain way, which doesn't have anything to do with temperature. So it's just a science of pushing your probe in and it should just slide right in. Right. Like going through hot butter. Yep. Yeah. That's and, how you know you have a tender but brisket. The, the problem I have <laughs> with, um, with that and Thanksgiving is it's not like you, I, we did a, I did brisket for Christmas last year. Yeah. And you know, Ashley's like, when's it going to be ready? I'm like, whenever it's ready. <laughs> like it tells me when it's ready. I don't tell it when it's ready. Hey, that's how it is at my house every year. Yeah. Um, we're going to tell you that we're going to eat at seven. It might be nine. Yeah. 
we, we never know. It just, we're at the mercy of the food. And then, but we do like a middle of the day deal. So I'm, I'm like, what, at what point in time at the night, you know, the day before, do I put it on to where I could try to get it ready to pull off at a certain time? And I think it turned out great. It was one of my better ones. Oh, but, I thought it was good. Um, yeah, it's, it's a little for family meals. I think I'm done with that, but I could tell you right now, spatchcock smoked turkey. Love it. Um, love it. And, and actually, uh, uh, the sauce from all, Th- all things barbecue. They've got a video on how to walk through that. Just cut that backbone out of that joker, open that thing up and you can smoke that a couple hours, three hours after you brine it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. But, um, Man, I, I'll tell you that smoked turkey. I, I'm a fried turkey guy um, most of the time, but that I, I've I'm, I'm digging this smoked turkey business. Well, and speaking of timing, you know they, of course, that smoker that we were using was the the Yoder uh, 1500, mm-hmm. big one, and so it, it was kind of weird because I put the smaller one on the right side further away from the heat source because I figured that one was going to cook way quicker and then put the big one closer to the heat source and it was the opposite it was the opposite because it's so big that that right side just wasn't heating as well and then the top doesn't heat which was surprising to me doesn't heat as fat you know because the heat rises and so you would think that it would be pretty consistent on the left hand side but that's that's the one thing that i that uh, deflector plate does a really good job of not the the cooler part of my smokers on the left side and the, the hotter parts away from the heat source because yep. that's where it exits. Yep. Yeah. But it was, I, it came out, but I, I, I took two of them and I started at nine o'clock the previous night. Cause I was like, I'm going to try to aim this for four ish. <laughs> and it finished up at eight. So, 23 hours <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> is how long that thing cooked. And I, I thought I was so far ahead of the game. I was like, we'll have this for lunch tomorrow. It's going to be great. And then we'll just do, we'll have a real big lunch and do everything. And then we'll just, uh, we'll celebrate with some sandwiches, you know, some pulled pork sandwiches at, at night, just make it yeah. real easy. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's what we had for dinner, but it was really good. It was really, really good. And then do you know the, the favorite dish, the overwhelming majority favorite dish as far as a main meal, like the carpaccio went over really well, um, you know, but that's more of an appetizer. Yeah. The what dish do you think was everybody's favorite dish on that trip? Now we had. I already know the answer, so I can't tell you. Oh, yeah. I was I, shocked. I did tell you. I was shocked. I did tell you. I don't know what all you had. So uh, I made Creole. One night I had a Cajun in camp mm. who was actually impressed with my Creole. Um, we did spaghetti one night. We did steaks. We did, um, what else did I make? The pulled pork, um, the Creole and Mexican chicken. Mm. Was it the Creole? Nope. Although it did get rave reviews. Yeah. And even that passed the Cajuns sniff test, he was like, dude, authentic. <laughs> and I was like, thanks. Everybody's favorite dish was my mom's Mexican chicken casserole. Ah. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, you've you've talked about this before. Yeah, yeah. Brought it up. Oh. Have you had it yet? No. No. Good, because I was gonna be really upset that you're getting everything. But don't don't act like you're getting upset at me. <laughs> He's the one doing it. Now, see if if you were just to just go buy a freezer and give give him a freezer, and you'll get some some Mexican. Hey, bring me a freezer. I'll get you some Mexican chicken. <laughs> but what what's funny is it, you know you got all these all these guys that are there, you know, and uh, uh, most of them were special operators, and for the most simple dish that I cooked all week to be the favorite was pretty awesome and so i had to text my mom i was like hey just so you know your mexican chicken casserole was a was a fan favorite like it was everybody's favorite meal of the week and she's like oh really she's like grandma be you know grandma would be really happy about that because she's the one that gave it to me back in like the 60s and i was like yeah wow i was like i thought you got that off of the back of a a a doritos (laughs) bag like when i was a kid and she goes no uh 
Yeah. So I was like, holy cow. But that was uh, super good. It was proven. And even the guy that was lactose intolerant, he's like, oh, I got to try that. <laughs> I'm going to risk it, boys. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, so well, when he, cause make, I, make way to the bathroom. All right. So taking, I, taking a risk. Well, I had, you know, because we take into consideration everybody's dietary needs, yeah. you know. And so I was like, I, I had some extra stuff for him. And I was like, I can cook this up for you. And he goes, no, I think I'm going to try that. I go, what? Are you actually lactose intolerant? You've been messing with me this whole time. And he goes, well, I pick and choose uh, what I'm going to eat. <laughs> he goes, I'm, I'm picking to, to eat that one. And I was like, or I'm choosing to eat that one. I said, oh, okay. Yeah. As far as I, he wasn't driving home the next day. So, and he'd already tagged out. Like this dude shows up into camp, never hunted elk before, kills a bull in the morning, cow in the afternoon, <laughs> tagged out in one day. And everybody's, all, Boys. All, all these hardcore hunters in camp, yeah. And they're like, bro, that's like the unicorn of elk hunting. Nobody, yeah, nobody, nobody gets that. to do he that. He doesn't believe yeah. it. He's like, I and he's just like, yeah, more. yeah. It's kind of like, uh, we had Josh on the podcast, you know, and Josh went on a, 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 um, a deer hunt outside of WWO. Like he, he paid uh, some money to go on a deer hunt and he's like, well, it's just so different, man. I was like, well, the places that, you know, WWO goes where these, tier, yeah. you know, they're, these people just they're, they're the best at, at what they do, you know? Yeah. And, and so, you know, he's texting me as he's in his, in his deer camp and, and he's like, yeah, he goes, I didn't see anything today. I didn't see anything today about day three, like mid afternoon. I was like, did you see anything this morning? He goes, no, are you getting ready to go back out for tonight? He goes, no, I, I went home to grab some good coffee and some warmer <laughs> clothes. And yeah. he goes, I'm going to go back. And uh, then he got back and didn't see anything. And he's like, I'm out of here and just left. And I was like, Dang. He missed his bidet. He, yeah. did, he, he, he probably did miss his bidet. But he was he was uh he was not having a real good time on that hunt. But uh hopefully he'll find some success here. Oh yeah. At some point this season. But so growing up, Thanksgiving a big deal or not a big deal? You know, we, we always went over to um grandparents' house, you know, and so we, we would all they were always pretty pretty big deal yeah lots of people and you know even when we were in the military you know I, we'd make we'd try to get home for, for oh, thanksgiving wow. i think yeah. there was a couple of times we weren't able to make it home and so we would do it there um wherever i was stationed i know i was deployed for one thanksgiving and then uh you know same with christmas too it's always a big yeah family family ordeal tell me about your family's thanksgiving oh always a big deal so we my dad's mom lived about an hour away in Lodi, Texas, out in the middle of nowhere. She was a cattle rancher. And uh, she would have her two sons and their families. And bigger than that, too. Yeah. and Well, that's how it started yeah. when I was really young. It was just us. Yeah, and those Rick two and Roz. And, yeah. Yeah, and then just more extended families started coming and uh, every year. And it just got bigger and bigger. And uh, I guess probably what, 30, 35 people there or more. Yeah. Or more. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And you had to be there like granny laid down the law. And if you weren't there, you got reprimanded the next year. Like, like it, it came, it, I don't know how far in the relationship I was with, with, uh, your sister when it was like, Hey, I'm just concerned about, well, that way our listeners know that, I'm married to Troy's sister, and it always just sounds like a slam every time. <laughs> I don't know how far I was along in that relationship with your sister. <laughs> anyway, but uh, it came every up. time he says it. It came up like uh, I don't know what your family does for Thanksgiving, but I can't do it. Like I, I, I have to be at my my dad's mom's house, my granny's house, yeah, for Thanksgiving, or else it, there's major consequences. Like this is a so hopefully. Your family doesn't have the same scenario <laughs> right. because we're we're never going to be together on Thanksgiving. Like it, yeah. it was a major major deal. Yeah, and I skipped one time. <laughs> yeah. You skipped yes. the time that the oven broke. Yeah, and yeah. I was glad I skipped. Yeah, but I think the oven breaking saved me because Granny was so worried about that. Yeah, that so she he, didn't she didn't notice that I was gone. Troy scored tickets to uh, the Cowboys game. And, and Dallas Cowboys always play on yep. Thanksgiving. And uh, 
so he's like, yeah, I'm not, I got tickets. And we're like, you what? Like, you're not going to be there. <laughs> I think that was my first one. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Relatively. But my other saving grace was the Cowboys were her favorite team. Yeah. So, but if, it, if I was going anywhere, that's, that's where you, the could strategy go. going in though, was we're just not going to mention that Troy's not here. <laughs> like, we're going to see if she happens to notice. Because, you know, it's a relatively small house. There's Everybody's in the rooms everywhere, and everybody's outside. There's just people everywhere. She's putting on the meal, and maybe she won't notice that she hasn't seen Troy. So everybody just keep your mouth shut. Nobody can ask, where. where's Troy? Just be quiet. And it took hours before she realized <laughs> it. And then, like, oh, and she's like, oh, he's, she, he's watching my boys play or something like yeah. that. But the oven, this is this is a hilarious thing, um, was uh, the oven broke. Stove didn't break, but the oven quit working. Same, it was a range, you know, and um, the, I don't know what was going on. People had it pulled out from the wall. I'm not, like, in the family yet. You know, I'm just like the Ashley's other person. And <laughs> so I'm just there, you know, like, what can I do to help? You know, I'm not going to jump in with the uncles and try to fix a, a an oven, but – the stress level is like, boom, like straight up. Cause she didn't know the oven wasn't working. The Turkey has not been cooking. We're, we're running into some issues. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so I'm like standing around, not in the way, but just like, is, is there any opportunity that I would have here? Figures standing and, around. Yeah. And she's like, <laughs> can somebody go get me? I've got a roasting pan in the shed behind the whatever. And I'm like, I'll do that. You know, I can go get something. So I went running out there, found the shed, huge roasting pan. You know, she's like, I'll just, I'm going to put the turkey in the roasting pan and we're going to put some water in there and I'm going to put these things on the burner and it's going to, you know. So I come back with the roasting pan to just let everybody know about the issue of the dirt daubers have claimed the roasting pan in this shed that had no door on it. And <laughs> it was coated inside and outside just dirt everywhere and i just like hey is this the pan <laughs> that you want and she's like oh my gosh somebody clean the inside of that out you know and i'm like i okay and i go out to the hose and i start you know scraping and <laughs> wiping mud away and and i get the thing as pristine as you can get lid and all uh, on the on the inside but she was specific just clean the inside don't we don't have time for the outside so i bring back this very clean roasting pan on the inside that's got pine straw and dirt all on the outside and they're like granny you know we got to clean we don't have time for this she's you know it's way up there we don't have time to clean that. you know so she turns all the burners on on top of the stove and on high throws the turkey in there pours water on it and does some other stuff puts the lid on it and sets it on top of the stove the outside of the pot catches on fire <laughs> because of all the debris. Right. I so was waiting have, for that. We actually. have flames <laughs> yes. and smoke. And somebody uh, was like, Granny, we can't let that. And she's like, let the damn thing burn. You know, it's just <laughs> yelling. And uh, I, I knew I had arrived. I said, "I we are now at a family event with my new family. And this is going to be talked about forever because granny uh, cussed and it was stressful and i think buck or somebody like actually did something and fixed the oven and everything was saved uh but it was <laughs> it was very touch and go there for a moment moment was that, was that uncle buck yeah that's my uncle buck uncle yeah. buck saves thanksgiving yeah. <laughs> that's a movie there you go <laughs> but me uh, growing up in uh military family we didn't have any family in the state you know wherever we were so we uh we would go out uh, for Thanksgiving or like I eat at a restaurant somewhere or, um, have a fish fry, uh, nothing, oh, yeah. nothing traditional. Like it was just the four of us and I had a good time. It was kind of neat. So yep. I kind of broke that tradition when I joined the military. Yeah. It was like how, you know, and so it was always stressful, you know, trying to pack up everything, come back home for, for that, you know, and then, Oh, we're going to come back for Christmas too. Yeah. You just got to, I don't know. Do your own thing, man. We do now. I was like, I've been coming to y'all for 
the last 10 years from California. Right. Guess what? <laughs> I'm retired now. Y'all are coming to the house. Yep. You can, you can drive the 30 minutes, 45 minutes to the house. So we host everything at the house now and, and we try to work through it the best we can. So I brought the idea of the non-traditional, um, not doing a Turkey. Cause I was just like, you know, we've done it every year. It's kind of done, yeah. you know? And I was like, it's the one time a year that we even have Turkey. And then we have it all left over cause nobody really eats all of it. Right. I go, everybody's going to eat all that brisket. Everybody's going to eat all that pulled pork. I was like, let's just see. Have you seen brisket prices? Yeah. Whew. Yep. That's the, but that's the hit I'm willing to take just so I don't have another violent, puking yeah, that's true uh, bathroom time I, <laughs> we're going to talk about this in our top three but man i i could eat a thanksgiving meal without the protein oh yeah like easy all the sides you know cook the turkey <clears throat> y'all could eat the turkey there's plenty yeah. enough here for me oh yeah we i mean and that's that's what i'll do you know because again i know that i'm basically going to be one of the only one that really eats it mm-hmm. uh, other than my family but you know i've got um summer sausage from no guy made up i'll mm-hmm. slice that and you know get some cheese and slice slice the cheese up put all that out on a nice little appetizer tray um, this year i'm going to add to it and put the carpaccio out there with the uh, appetizer tray and uh, just see how that goes over um <laughs> i think you'll have to report back yeah i think my wife and kids are probably going to be the only one that really eats it um, yeah. just because a lot of people get weirded out by yeah fine Get weirded out. By Let me eat the good stuff. Raw, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's technically cooked. In acid. In acid, but so we'll see. All right. But yeah, I, I don't want to give too much away because I want to get to the top three and talk about. Well, let's do that after we take this break to hear from our sponsor. Seventeen eighty three, the first victory. Victorious in war, this year sees America earn her independence. At Adam Rolls Pennant, we celebrate victories at the end of war. 1783 is the first of many such celebrations in our nation's history. This is an elegantly refined blend of sandalwood, cedar, and tea tree. The subtle, lingering, woody scent of the sandalwood, light cedar, and the top notes of tea tree is the essence of masculinity, honoring the men who fought and continue to fight to provide us our independence. Check it out at AdmiralsPennant.com. Without it, you might as well shave. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. Oh, so I'm wanting to give you the head fake. All right. Top three Thanksgiving foods. Troy, we're going to let you lead off with your top three. All right. No honorable mentions. I don't have any honorable mentions. Only knows, knows what he likes. My favorite top three. Number three. Green bean bundles. Ooh, wrapped in bacon? Wrapped in bacon, yes. cooked with brown sugar and butter and whatever else my sister makes them with, but they are delicious. And I could probably eat the whole tray, and that could be my meal. Now, does she sprinkle brown sugar? Yeah, it's cooked with brown sugar. I don't know if she sprinkles on that, it. That's all absorbed. Like it all... Yeah, it's not Renders. sprinkled on top. It's like in the you beef. take uh, you well, take, right? But when you bake it, right? Yeah, no, 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 no. So it's better than that. You take the butter and the brown sugar, based on the portions of whatever you're cooking. You, well, you heat the butter, and then you pour the brown sugar into the butter, and you stir that up mm-hmm. where it's a sauce. Yeah, it's like honey. And then you pour that sauce over the top. Yeah, over the yeah, yeah. delicious. See, I like mine uh, because I I did make those for the guys um, on steak night. So we had green bean bundles. I did a shrimp boil. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. In aluminum foil. <laughs> it was. <would. laughs> now. You cook shrimp in aluminum foil. However you want to say it. Chet's boiling right now. <laughs> but. That was one of the things that, that I think I showed it to you before I left. I was like, I really want to try this. And all you do is, I mean, there's a lot of butter, you know, but you, you stick the butter in there and then um, put a little andouille sausage. Um, yeah, we do that at home on the grill. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Just oh. little foil packets. Yeah. You just fill it up with and whatever like, you want. Throw some butter in there. And, yeah. Little Old Bay. Mm-hmm. And then so. Not we, a boil. We had that with no, the steak. Not a boil. With the steak and then the, the bacon wrapped green beans. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. Bundles. They're bundles. It's not bacon wrapped green beans. Green bean bundles. Whatever. We call them bacon wrapped green beans. But <laughs> super good. <laughs> I love it. I just, I don't do the, I don't do the brown sugar. Cause again, I don't like sweet and meat. They just, for me, they don't mix. So yeah, I do not like bacon wrapped dates. Have y'all ever had those? I've Big never thing even it, heard of such I, a thing. I've kind of made it a life goal to stay away from dates. Yeah. It's, it's like, a, I, there's, I've got no need for dates. It's one of those hors d'oeuvres. that's like, I guess really fancy because at a lot of weddings, they'll yeah. pass those or like ever since that, uh, uh, I don't dig them, dude. I, 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 I have never swallowed one. I'll say that. Indiana Jones, when he was uh, eating the date and that monkey is poison. Dates. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not, I'm staying away from this. That's, that's how assassins poison <laughs> archaeologists <laughs> and monkeys. And I don't have a monkey to I taste mean, my food before I eat it. <laughs> how many people are using the bathroom after eating a date? Cause isn't that something you take to be? be Those regular? are prunes. prunes. Oh, prunes. But isn't a date a dried prune? No. What's a date? The date is its own fruit. Is it? Yeah, a prune thought, is a dried plum. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. We need a professional chef on the show maybe to help us out. With or some just of these somebody things. with Google. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have one of those. No. Yeah. All right, number two, deviled eggs. Oh, oh man. Yes, that should have made my list, and I didn't even yeah, think just, about it. Yeah. Yeah, those are my absolute favorite. Oh, I could eat five. Um, well, actually, they're not my favorite because they're number two. But they're got to have them. And over the past probably 10 years, I've been in charge of of making them for everyone. So You know why? Because my Aunt Charlotte passed away? No. <laughs> why? Because that wasn't immediately, Troy, you have to take this over. That's true. It was because whoever else made them would, you know, naturally all the food shows up before it's time to eat, right? Well, Troy would be in the fridge eating all of the deviled eggs. It's true. So then when it was time, like, oh, let's make the make every, you know, the buffet so everybody come and eat, half the eggs were gone and there weren't <laughs> enough to go around everywhere. And it was Troy's fault. So they were like, Troy, you're making the eggs now. So what he does is he makes enough for everybody and some for him to eat. Like a personal stash. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And in the and personal it, it works stash. out because there's plenty. He brings plenty. Yeah. And he's full of eggs before he shows up. <laughs> well, and now in the personal stash, I'll I'll do like some different hot sauces and I'll try like putting jalapenos and onions and stuff yeah. in some and you know, I'll make the traditional and then I try to mix it up with different flavors for for me. Let me tell you. Um Brookshire's uh grocery store, you know Brookshire's. Yeah, Louisiana. Deviled egg potato salad. Uh, I've had, yeah, I've had that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's probably not just at Brookshire's, but Walmart I, I recently it. had some. Fantastic. Good stuff. I do yeah. like that. Love deviled eggs. So, so why is it that, that like if I have just like hard boiled eggs, you know, I max out at about three before I'm just like, I, I just can't eat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but when they're deviled, I can have like a thousand. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. What sense does that make? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's like some, Something that you mix in with the with it's, the yolk, they're, they're creamy. It's it's the, the the consistency is yeah yeah. I don't know. It breaks down faster maybe in your gut. Who knows? Uh, yeah, maybe that's it. I don't know. I, just a boiled egg yolk is it like it gets chalky in my you know it's like oh yeah you know so it's that extra stuff the magic that you put in there. Yeah, makes them good. Yeah. All right, number one, cheese grits. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's good. They are so good. My mom has made them for years for Christmas, and now I may make her make them for Thanksgiving and Fantastic. Christmas. Fantastic. She shared the recipe. I can't do it like she does it. It They're just phenomenal. I, I could sit there and eat the whole bowl of that as well. So uh, but to my point earlier, just based on your top three, not even mine. If you were to put up four dishes, turkey, cheese grits, green bean bundles, and deviled eggs, and say you can only pick three. See you, turkey. Yeah. 
get out. I could do that easy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's my top three. I love them all. It's a good top three. It was hard to put them in a number order because they're all three so good. I had, yeah, I had the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we recorded this before Thanksgiving Day, but it releases on Thanksgiving Day. And Troy, that's what you're eating right now. Right now. If you're listening to this on Thanksgiving Day, Troy's eating deviled eggs, cheese grits, and green bean bundles. That's right. What kind of grits? Cheese grits. Cheese. Specific type of grit, though. Oh, probably uh, Quaker. Oh, yeah. instant grits? No, oh, no, 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 no. Not instant. No. Oh, okay. Quaker. Quaker has instant grits and Quaker has grits. They're normal grits. But South Carolina has the stone ground grits. Yes. Those are, those are the, the best. Yeah. That's what, that's what I use for, uh, cause Kevin will bring those for me whenever we see each other. And he's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, you need, need some more grits. And so he'll, he'll bring me those stone cut grits and, and then, Oh, they're good. I like to put the, uh, I like to put a country ham, and mm. slice up little pieces and put them in there. So ham and grits, oh, so mm-hmm. shrimp and grits. Shrimp and grits. Oh, are, now are we're the best. Oh, I'm, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, I'll go. Then I'll let you go, Matt. Um, number three, uh, green bean bundles. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the secret to this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is you get the. Whole green beans, you don't get the cut green beans in the can. Yeah, you got to get the whole ones, um, so they'll wrap in a bundle. That makes the the good bundle, good yeah. good size bundle there. Um, I am uh, have graduated into the I could be the bundle maker uh, for this recipe for my wife when I try to help out. Like so, I've I've wrapped bundles quite a bit. Uh, number two, I'm I'm going with turkey, but it's a smoked turkey that has been brined injected and then um oh there's a a special so the same people that make the yard bird have a have a seasoning called fin and feather yeah i saw that one and i'm telling you oh my gosh uh fantastic and then it's it's smoked it's spatchcocked and you you know what i'm talking about on spatchcock you flatten that thing out you cut the backbone out of the turkey and you flatten that thing all the way out so you it's not this big ball it's actually um, flat well the the turkey breast cooks at the same uh basically the same time as the thighs and leg because it's all got access to the heat and nothing's protected um man i love it I, and i've i've I don't know. I it, sometimes you work at something like I. It took me a while to get to brisket. It took me a little while to get to the pork. Then I'm just like, man, this is really good. I mean, the first time I followed these instructions on this turkey, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm. I don't think I'll fry another turkey like this. Is this is that good? Mm-hmm. But again, it takes a lot of planning. You got to have it ahead of time. What's uh, your favorite Brian pellet? It. What's that? What's your favorite pellet that you're using for that? I typically uh, a little bit, a little bit sweeter. So pecan. Um, but still a any apple or hickory base. Like eh, I don't I don't go out if I if I'm using flavored uh, fruit trees, if you will, like pecan and it's it's pecan and cherry, um, or a mixture of the two. Mm-hmm. But uh, number one, stuffing. I love stuffing. I like stuffing. All right. It's all right. I it love. Depends. It, it, it depends on what kind of. There's so many I different love variations. Stove top stuffing. There you go. I yeah. You don't get exotic with the stuffing, right? You know, right. but I, even the homemade, the homemade crumb. I love it. Homemade bread crumbs. The homemade. All, all I'm I'm fine with that, but I don't need you know, like cranberries. Don't belong in it. You know, some people get crazy. What about celery? Yes, add it because celery is part of the Trinity, buddy. So, I'm okay with that. What what Trinity are we talking about here? The uh, Cajun Trinity. Oh, okay. So bell pepper, onion, celery. onion and celery. So yeah, I'm I'm fine with it. But it's cooked down. It's not crunchy. It's just cooked. Now down. see that, that now that I can get behind. Yeah, but I've I've had some that you know like a sometimes it doesn't get cooked down like a church potluck or something good. like yeah. that, and it just. You, you're eating this mushy stuff, and all of a sudden you get a crunch, and you're like, "Oh, what was that? Not, that shouldn't be oh, in there." I'm okay with that. Yeah, 
at now a there, there are another box. another some things like that where you know you add something in there for a little bit of texture so everything's not just mush i i I get that, but stuffing is just not one of them. Uh, yeah, actually, my mom made one with, uh, you know, it's a really good sausage and all, all kind. Of, I mean, just really, really good stuff. Um, I like, I like it. And when I was in college, like, I, that'd be a meal for me. It would be like a, just a box of stovetop. All right, make it with chicken broth. Oh, anything's better with chicken or beef broth. Mm-hmm. All right, Matt. I, I'm a little. Surprised that stuffing was number one for you. Yeah. Because it's kind of a take it or leave it with me. Like, I just, eh, whatever. That's fine. I don't have to have it. Not everybody has good taste. I'm okay with that. (laughs) So, oh, man. Um, I've had a lot to think about here. (laughs) Um, Examine my decisions. and So, yeah. Because, well, the more we talk, the more the of these foods that started coming to mind. Oh, yeah, like the deviled eggs. Yeah. yeah. Like I just, oh, that probably should have made my list. But my number three was black olives. Whatever. Because we just, <laughs> whatever. That's not a Thanksgiving side. It absolutely is. No, it's not. <laughs> we have. He's just saying that because you hate black oh, olives. Gross. <laughs> So next to, you know, the, the, the appetizer tray with the summer sausage and all these exotic meats, there's always olives, right? And my whole family, my daughters, next, if they get number two, if they get to them before I do, but they they, they all just get gone. Right. So, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to not use olives, but something that uses olives and those are pinwheels. You guys know what pinwheels are? No. Uh-uh. So um, you basically take a, a tortilla, a f- white flour tortilla, lay it out, and it's uh, cream cheese, jalapenos, olives, a um, little bit of cheese, and then you roll it up and cut them. And then when you, oh, okay, you know, yeah. then you've got the little pinwheel. I've seen it. Looks like, oh, it's like a roll. Yeah. 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 But it, we, we call them pinwheels. And, I can plow through those, especially after they get taken out of the fridge and they're sitting on the counter for a while and they get to room temperature. It almost that. sounded like the uh, av- uh, the seven layer dip that you make with it's, only six layers on one side because you cut the olives out for me. For Thank you. you. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. It's it's yeah, it's almost kind of like that. Um, yeah, minus the avocado and yeah, bean, refried yeah. bean. Yeah, yeah. So those sound good, man. But once they get to room temperature. And that cheese so just starts to get a little warm. Pin, <laughs> pinwheels, your number three, not black olives. Yeah, but we have black olives in the pinwheels, so I can kind of get the black olive in there. So, yeah, I need that recipe. Yeah, I mean, and they're so super, and that's all. That's literally all it is: is cream cheese, jalapeno. Do you chop up the olives and jalapenos before you put them on yep. the flour tor- tortilla? Yep. yep. So you just kind of chop them all up. Okay, sprinkle it on there and then roll it up. Well, you, you, for the what, jalapenos, you cut them up like this and then you spread them out over the tortilla. Well, for what the you would do olives, is you is, cut them up and you put them in the trash bag. <laughs> you would take you would take your your bowl and put all your ingredients in the bowl, mix it, mix all, it up, all up, and then spread it, and then roll yeah. the tortilla, and then slice. Super super easy, super good, mm-hmm. and we always never have enough because those are always one of the first things gone. I bet if you sprinkle a little garlic powder in there, it'd be good too. Yeah, I'm, mm. the, the options are endless. Knock yourself out. Dude, I'm going to make something tomorrow. Yeah. You could probably make a little, uh, you know, put a little Louisiana hot sauce in there too. Ooh. And put a little uh, carpaccio in there as well. Ooh, I don't know carpaccio going there. No. Yeah, no. All right. Number two, green bean casserole. With the uh, crunchy onions on top? Yep. Oh, yeah. The fried onions on top? Yeah. And I, I like know that's that. a point of contention because, you know, on, on a lot of the the posts that you see, everybody's like, green bean casserole sucks. No, it doesn't. But So you mentioned it, some of it does. So you mentioned church potluck. Yep. I've that, had some terrible green bean that, casseroles. And, and, and there's, there's typically more than one person that brings green bean casserole to a church potluck. There's always one that goes first. It, yeah, because there's <laughs> such a big difference. And sometimes yeah. some one of them just like, didn't get finished. Well, that's know? the same thing with stuffing. I mean, there's yeah. there's just different ways to cook it. Yeah. So 
But I, I'm I'm with you now. I, I will tell you this: once green bean bundles came into the to, to the mix, you, you don't need green bean casserole. Right. I love a good green bean casserole. In fact, I miss the, anything that requires those little onion things. You know, <laughs> should get should get some notice. But you can't have two green bean dishes. And in, in our you, in no, our you family, can. in our you family, can. it's it's the bundle. It's the bundle. You you can definitely have both. And uh, <clears throat> what's funny about those green bean uh, bundles, as you gentlemen call them, um, that's what they're called. Bundle. Sorry, right. I just call them bacon wrap green beans. But whatever. Well, what do you do? Just to, how many green beans are wrapped in a in a bundle? You, you get no in your recipe. Five. A bundle of green beans, you mean? Because you bacon wrap green bean could be a one wrap of bacon around green, every green, green beans, bean. uh, plural. It means more than <laughs> one. We went over that uh, with aircraft and aircrafts. Uh, sure, but yeah, and and I, actually, I learned that recipe from uh, Sharice. I'd never even thought about it. Sharice is uh, kind of my partner there on uh, WWO. 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 Mm. Um, does a lot of work and is a phenomenal cook. And so she's the one I learned that from. So that's why I tried it for those guys for the first time. A big hit too. But, uh, I still, I still got to go with the original green bean casserole just because, you know, the way my family now, the difference is on green bean casserole. Do you use the whole green beans or do you use, um, the shredded green beans? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't use the shredded. If I recall the best one that I remember it where the church I grew up in, both ah there a mixture shredded and whole see now i don't uh i don't like the uh i don't like the whole i like the shredded because you get more of the cream and mushroom soup in that flavor mm. yeah i don't know i like the whole um, yeah i'm not a fan but to each their own it's just one of those i might have to try to make some with the mix yeah yeah i can't it's a texture thing for me i don't know why mm. Maybe just always growing up, I had the shredded green beans. And number one, mashed potatoes and gravy. I almost what, had. What, what color is your gravy? Uh, a yellowish <laughs> brown, almost. Uh, because we take the we take the fat from the turkey and then make the gravy out of that, so it's just kind of that color. Okay. But man, and, and I, I still, we have not perfected it, um, in my family, the way that my grandmother made it Yeah, because her gravy was out of this now, world. I'm going to ask you a few questions on the mashed potatoes. Are they whipped with an electronic device? No. Okay. So they're not, we don't, we don't have like an electronic whipping device. So you're not taking the, we take a potato <laughs> masher. Yeah. And mash. What else is in the potatoes? Milk. That's it. Butter. Salt. Man, butter. Man, I'm about to up your game. You ready? Yep. Sour cream. Mm-hmm. Let me. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. a little bit of that. Cheese. Shredded cheese. Yeah. Now, not pre-packaged shredded because in order to keep pre-packaged shredded cheese from sticking to itself, they coat that cheese with a wax mm -hmm. so you have to get a block of cheese and you have to shred it yourself and you because that'll incorporate into the potato see we're not so much uh, better we're not so, real fancy at my house so much so, so all of my cheese is block cheese that we have to shred <laughs> ourselves so um but but you won't know you won't know there's like cheese in it because you mix that in while the potatoes yeah. are still really hot and then i'll <sighs> yeah that was almost on my list was the yeah. fifth grade boys mashed potatoes. Do you know what that is? No. So I've never had boy in my mashed potatoes. When I, <laughs> when I was in fifth grade, a little weird. <laughs> our Sunday school teacher would have oh. all, all of us over and his wife would cook for us and she would make brisket and mashed potatoes Ooh, I'm liking and, where it's going. and other things. And, these mashed potatoes that she made, we just we thought they were like blessed from mm -hmm. from God above and came from heaven because they were so good. Yeah, and 
so she named when she, she I think she got asked to put something in a cookbook. She put her recipe for the mashed potatoes in the cookbook and called it fifth grade boys mashed potatoes. Oh no way! Because we like put her on a pedestal yeah. because of these mashed potatoes. So yeah, Hollywood, if you're listening, thank you. Yeah, her name for those mashed potatoes is Holly, and she married a guy with the last name of Wood. Yeah, so her name's Hollywood. She makes the best mashed potatoes on the planet. Yeah, so, I'm going to try those out. Yeah. I'm really impressed with what Ashley does. I mean, I like those. We have them quite a bit. And it might be, good. Ashley might have been and the one that asked her to put. Authentic gravy is fantastic as well. Yeah. Well, and, and, it, and it goes back to, you know, previously, before my whole issue with whether it's gluten or whatever it is, but my grandmother made rolls like homemade rolls. Yeah. Yeah. And Oh, like that would, that would have been my number one. Mm -hmm. If you could still eat, if I could still eat them. Yeah. Mm. But taking that piping hot roll that's homemade and dipping it in those mashed potatoes and gravy. Mm. Mm. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I might just go get sick. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. Like that lactose guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna risk it, boys. <laughs> I'm going in. Why don't you lactose? I'm risking it. But <laughs> yep. So that's my number one mash, mashed potatoes and gravy. Because then, even when you have like the cream corn or um, the green bean casserole, and you mix it into the mashed potatoes and gravy, oh, so good. You, you keep your cream cream corn. Yeah. You don't like it? Yeah. Not it's not a Thanksgiving thing for like that's not something that gets corn corn casserole, yes, but not Ooh, cream corn. Corn casserole. Or just ever regular corn, but not cream corn. It's that doesn't belong in Thanksgiving in my opinion. Corn critters? <laughs> corn critters. Fritters. The fritters. Fritters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the critters. Those are mine. Those little corn critters. <laughs> Where are those little corn critters at? Let me have some of them. I'm getting ready to go shoot some of those here in a couple weeks. Yeah. Back when yeah. Uh, last fish fry I was at, we had, uh, instead of hush puppies, we had uh, fritters. Those, yeah. It was really good. Those are. So, how, how, why are you just against uh, cream corn? Like, what? Well, Everything that we've talked about from a food perspective on Thanksgiving stays in its own place on your plate. Your green bean bundle is wrapped <laughs> in bacon and in a bundle. Your gravy, if you're not an animal, is you you make a place with the mashed potato spoon after you put it on your plate. And you pour the gravy. And you have a place for I, your gravy. I, I get that, yeah. Um, what else did we talk about? Pinwheels, deviled eggs, cream corn doesn't keep to itself on your plate it it propagates and so does other. that gravy when you bit, get your first bite of mashed potatoes it runs over the side and well, here's the, plate. the thing gravy that runs into um some cheese grits that's not a bad thing you know it's not a great thing but it's not a bad thing cream corn cream <laughs> doesn't belong on a deviled egg like that can't happen I, don't know. I, I guess I don't know what type of what do you what is the what is the cream in your corn? I guess that is just, it's fluid and that fluid you the fluids are. But what is the fluid made of? I don't know. The only fluid that Fifth belongs on a Thanksgiving plate. <laughs> the only fluid that belongs on a Thanksgiving plate is gravy. That's the only one, and it should be thick enough where it's just not like blah, everywhere. But you put cream corn, you, you get you get cream corn on a. Um, on a like a chinette paper plate, you know the thick like a big family meal, then uh, that thing's just soggy, and you can't even use that for seconds. I don't. I don't. I guess uh, we use uh, cream cheese. Uh, for cream cream corn. corn's always runny. At any it's runny. Any kind I've ever yeah. Had. Mine's never. Ours is never runny. Well, I'm, I just hadn't had your cream corn, so I may be a little too harsh on my shoot down of your yeah, yeah you might you might want to try it because it's not i'm it's not gonna not, try it for thanksgiving no, I, don't, I don't like the yeah because the, the type you're talking about i've had before at church potlucks well they, they have cream <laughs> corn in a can there's cream corn in a can yeah well no, yeah no that's no, like real runny no this is homemade where you put the corn in put the cream cheese in a crock pot and then it it melts little salt pepper butter and then scoop it out 
and it's almost like the consistency of mashed potatoes with corn in it, which is awesome. By the way, I love just mixing corn. Well, and I may mashed have tried it sometime, but it, but it, it is yeah. It's it's if not. If it's liquidy, no, it, it's no, out. no, 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 it's out. no. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't do that. Would be I can't bad. believe you didn't bring up Bing cherry salad because I hate it, <laughs> and you know that. <laughs> oh, I don't so even know what gross. that is. It's a southern jello dish yeah, dessert it's, it's, it's so gross gelatinous and my whole family like loves it it's a gelatinous uh it's got jello molded thing with nuts uh coke walnuts coca-cola is in there uh bing cherries that's what it's called bing cherry salad uh little marshmallows or, or is that know. some kind of a cheesy there's stuff in it it's disgusting <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't sound like something that I would that I would eat. But but on that, real quick because it's it's not on our top three favorite, just your your favorite dessert, Thanksgiving dessert. Oh, mm. I don't know. I didn't have time to think about this, Matt. <laughs> I, I'm a you know it depends. I, I like having pumpkin pie at Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, but if you put a pumpkin pie and a pecan pie. With your grand's recipe. Oh, that pecan pie. Is- I'm going to get the pecan pie. Every day. And I'll just have to come back later for the... And, and you, if you're if you're doing pumpkin pie, you got to have like some kind of a cool whip or some, you know... Cool whip. Whip. whip topping. Cool whip. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. My first thought was pie, too. Just any pie. At Granny's house, there was... They would clear off the the dining room table, the round one in that round room, and load it with pie after we all, all ate pies. dinner. Mm-hmm. And it was like all different kinds of pies. So that's what I always remember. Just It's always pie. How about you? Before my issue, pecan pie. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could. Uh, that By far my favorite. Um but I think this year, uh, because my mother-in-law is is uh, pretty renowned for, um, oh my gosh, and I can't even think of the name of the pie. Rhubarb? Nope. Strawberry? Nope. <laughs> Lemon? Nope. Marmalade? Key lime? Oh, I just, almost, I just had it and then you just took it away from me. Lemon icebox. Snicker? No, it's got cream cheese. Uh, cheesecake cheesecake thank you cheese- <laughs> it's not, not it's pie. not pie cheesecake pie <laughs> cheesecake but it is in a pie dish but it's, it's a pie it's yeah pie slices yeah yeah but i think that's what i can handle and, and hers is, is is really smooth you know and it, it's, yeah. it's super good so i think yeah. i might go with that but i also like pumpkin pie i don't know yeah a, spi- or, a spicy pumpkin pie like one that's got a, mm, a little kick like a, yeah yeah, or you know, just some uh, really high end vanilla ice cream with cheesecake, nectarine moonshine in it. Oh, there you go. That's for after dinner when it's time for everybody to go, and you're just like, wish <laughs> everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we stay together. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your top three, Troy. Yes, and we've got a good word. Yeah, so the good word. On Thanksgiving is thankful. Shocker. Shocker. It's a good day Where to did just he pull that one. To just look at things and just be thankful for, for all the things that God has given you and all the things that you have. Um yeah. So I wanna wanted to read Psalms one hundred, um, which is a psalm for giving thanks. So make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. So there's plenty to be thankful for, and there's plenty to thank people for. No, absolutely, and that that should be our spirit, you know, at this time of year. Yeah, is to just kind of step back and look at what we have that we did not 
create for us and be thankful for it. I definitely think that we should take more than one day. Well, yeah. And we ought to integrate thankfulness into our daily life. I agree. And use Thanksgiving as the model for that, where we're around family and friends. And even though it may not be the best of times sometimes with mud daubers taking over roasting pans and catching on fire and ovens not working and, you know, all the little things that families have, um, you know, between each other, I think, you know, we take that one day a year and we just, we force ourselves to get along and, and typically have a pretty good time at it. Yeah. You know, whether it's, you know, watching the football games after dinner or, you know, whatever it is, but spend that time with your family being thankful for them. Um, you know, how about we do that for our neighbors and everybody else all year round? Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, we are very thankful that you are listening to our podcast. <laughs> we are thankful for our listeners. Yes, very, very yes, much so. Are. So thank, thank you for tuning in today. We really do appreciate it every time. You listen, it, I mean, you're taking time out of your day to spend with us, and, and we're very appreciative of that. And if uh, you have bought one of these spectacular hard-headed T-shirts or which, a- any other apparel. By the way, very comfortable, great material, um, not the cheap T-shirt uh, that some people are scared about getting when you buy something online. Yeah, if you've bought one, uh, please share it on our Facebook page. We'd love to see the merch The merchandise. Merch in the wild. Out there in the wild. All right. Have a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for spending time with us. We'll see you next week. I'm so hungry now. (laughs) (laughs) I like good food. You're eating it right now, Chet. Remember? (laughs) I listen to this man. What time is it? What is what is our future selves doing right now? Oh, I'm ooh, I'm definitely in a food coma. Yeah. <laughs>